Hello everyone. Uh, this video is going to discuss the exemplification essay. Um, so we'll talk about all of the different things that are involved in what an exemplification essay is and how to write one. So what is an exemplification essay? Uh, in a nutshell, it is the most simple, straightforward essay that you will encounter in your academic career. Uh, basically, it is the kind of essay that all of your future essays will build from. Uh, exemplification means example. So your body paragraphs are going to be built around different examples for a topic. Uh, so it's the simplest form of evidence. And then all of your other essays will kind of build from examples or from evidence in the future. So this is the basic, most simple form of an essay that you will experience. Um, so the whole point of an exemplification essay is to provide examples to prove your point. There are a lot of different types of examples that you can use. Uh, for example, we have facts, events, and statistics. Now for this exemplification essay, you should only be using facts and statistics that you already know um, because this is not a research paper. It is not um, a paper where you should be researching anything. So when you look at your topics list, uh, which is in the exemplification folder, if you pick a topic and your first instinct is to Google information about that topic, then that is not the topic you need to write about in your exemplification essay. Uh, information in the exemplification essay should be things that you already know. Uh, people is another type of example. So if you were writing an exemplification essay about how heroes are everyday people, then you might would use like firefighters, for example, or police officers or military men and women. And you might talk about those people in, as examples. Um, you could use quotations uh, if they're quotations from people and those quotations are pretty well known. Uh, again, it's not something that you would want to research. And anecdotes are another type of example. I do not want you to use anecdotes in your exemplification essay because anecdotes and formal writing are sometimes very much confused. Anecdotes are short stories about a particular topic that is related to whatever you're writing about. Uh, but anecdotes sometimes are personal stories. And if you're writing about yourself, then it's really hard to stay in formal writing. And formal writing, you cannot use first and second person pronouns. So do not use anecdotes for this essay. Uh, but it doesn't matter what type of example you decide to use in this essay. Your example has to be representative. So let's talk about what that means. Uh, for an example to be representative, it must represent the majority of people or the average perception of an idea. So um, think about this. You might hear of a person who is a heavy drinker. Uh, deny the harmful effects of heavy drinking. So, you know, he, he or she is a heavy drinker and they don't think that it's going to affect them negatively. It's not going to affect their health because they know someone who drank heavily every day and lived to be in his 90s. Well, that's not a valid example because it doesn't represent the majority. Um, we know that the expected outcome of heavy drinking is early death and a lot of health problems. Uh, daily heavy drinking causes health problems. We know that scientifically. Now, there are always exceptions to every rule, uh, but the average person who drinks heavily for a long time is not going to live to their 90s. So just because we know this one person who did this one thing and lived to be old doesn't mean that most people will live to be 90s. So that example of the man who lived into his 90s and he drank heavily every day is not a representative example because it does not represent the majority of people. 
Uh, there are a couple of things that I want you to be careful about when you write an exemplification essay. Uh, be careful that you don't end up just comparing two things. Um, you don't want to say this is better than this and then talk about both items. You want to focus on the one item. Uh, be sure you're not describing a process and be sure you're not creating a cause and effect argument. It should simply be a list of examples that prove your thesis. Um, if in the future you use the anecdotes as examples, not for this essay, but in a future essay, be sure you use several different stories as anecdotes and not one large story as an anecdote. One long story turns your essay into a narrative, and that's not what we're trying to do here. Uh, some other pitfalls that I want you to be aware of is uh, not using proper transitions. So you need to use transitions in your writing. Uh, transitions should come in between paragraphs, but they should also come before your specific evidence. Uh, so here is a list of proper transition phrases that you can use in the body of your paragraphs, in the body of your essay. Um, here is just kind of what your entire essay would look like. Uh, you have an introductory paragraph that sparks interest and it leads into that thesis statement. Um, you do not say, I think, or this essay will anywhere in your exemplification writing. The introduction paragraph should end with your thesis statement. And then you have the three body paragraphs with transitions and then your conclusion paragraph at the end. So the body of an exemplification essay, all three of your body paragraphs are set up the exact same way. So if you read and looked through the general and specific evidence uh, lecture that is posted this week, uh, you've already learned about what general and specific evidence is. So what I am seeing here is you have a topic sentence and general evidence that should start your body paragraphs. And then you should have a specific evidence, which is your example that proves your thesis. And then commentary, which is where you explain why that example proves your thesis. And then another piece of specific evidence and then more commentary. So this specific evidence and commentary, that is a chunk. Uh, that is what I mean when I say chunk in body paragraphs in other lecture videos that you have experienced. Um, notice that every body paragraph is set up the exact same way and they all end with commentary. All of your body paragraphs should end with you explaining why your examples prove your point and your point is your thesis statement. Uh, so creating evidence. Uh, some of the things that you can do when you are trying to decide which examples you're going to use in this essay. Uh, first, you have to decide on a topic and then you have to decide on a thesis statement. So you're going to write your thesis statement for your outline activity this week. Uh, and then I'm going to check your thesis statement and make sure that they are um, structured well. Uh, but you're going to list your thesis statement. And your thesis statement should have a plan of development in it. So your thesis statement should have those three things that you're going to discuss in your body paragraphs. So when you have those three things, then you're going to list everything that comes to mind related to those three pieces of the plan of development. It doesn't matter how silly or how ludicrous they are. Write down as much as you can think of. And then after you've listed everything that you can think of underneath those three points from your thesis as plan of development, then you're going to look at them and you're going to pick two or three that are the strongest for each topic. Those two or three things that you choose, those two or three examples that you choose, will then become the two or three chunks that you compose for your body paragraphs. Uh, so once you have chosen your examples, how do you organize it in your paper? Uh, in most cases, evidence should be organized from least to most important. You always want to end your essay with your strongest point. Uh, depending on your topic, you might want to go from least controversial to most controversial, simple to most complex, least to most extreme. But whatever the most is, that's going to be the last thing that you write about. 
So your weakest examples, your weakest body paragraph will go first. Your strongest examples or your strongest body paragraph will go last. Uh, so your thesis statement may need to change a little bit to reflect where your points are and where your body paragraphs are, because the three pieces of your plan of development in your thesis statement should be the same order that your body paragraphs go in in the body of your essay. Uh, if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say plan of development, then go back to last week and review the formal language and thesis statement video that I posted in last week's module. So here is kind of an example of how um, exemplification essays are organized. This is about uh, how people treat their animals like humans. So my thesis statement would be uh, some people treat animals like humans because they give pets human names, dress pets in human-like clothing, and act like parents, period. So these two rows are going to be, uh, this is what makes up my thesis statement. So the first point in my plan of development is give pets human names. So that paragraph is going to be about different examples where people had pets and they gave them human names. So Spot is no longer a man's best friend. We don't name our dogs Spot anymore, but we might name our dogs Maggie or Lucy or Bob or Frank uh, or other human-like names. Our second point in the plan of development from our thesis statement is that some people uh, dress pets in human-like clothing. So my paragraph, my second body paragraph would cover uh, clothing that we put on pets. So small dogs like miniature Yorkies often wear rhinestone studded collars or dresses. Uh, we put sweaters on dogs in the wintertime. Uh, so that whole paragraph would be about different clothes that pet owners put on their pets. And then the, the third point, the final point in my thesis statement is uh, they act like parents. And then that whole paragraph would be uh, filled with examples where people who do not have children but have pets act like parents. So they call themselves a dog mom or a dog dad, and they may pay for doggy daycare instead of you know human daycare. So um, this is kind of how a thesis statement with a plan of development. So uh, let me go back uh, with a plan of development. So this first point and then this middle row are my three pieces. And then those line up with the body paragraph. So body paragraph one, give pets human names. And I talk about human names. Body paragraph two, dress pets in human clothes. And I write a paragraph about clothes on dogs. Body paragraph three, they act like parents. And then my paragraph would talk about all the ways in which people who have no children still act like parents towards their pets. Keep in mind, guys, this is not a research paper. Do not Google anything. No outside sources at all should be used. This um, paper should come from your own knowledge. And these are the minimum requirements. OK, um, you are going to ignore this orange one here. Um, I have a minimum requirement slide posted for the online class. Uh, the format should be MLA format. So I have posted a video in the how to folder. If you do not know how to format a document using MLA standards, the length of this essay should be two full pages of text. It is not a page and a half. It is not a page and three quarters. It has to be two full pages of text. And your language for this paper should be formal academic writing. So first and second person pronouns should not be used. In the English 101 handouts packet, there is a list towards the end of the packet of all of the first, second, and third person pronouns. So you can double check that you are not using first or second person pronoun. Um, please ignore this orange box right here about the due dates. Uh, this does not pertain to you at all. You will only work on an outline this week. That is what is due uh, for your assignment Sunday night is an outline of your exemplification paper. We will start drafting your exemplification essay next week. 
Um, and then again, no sources are permitted. So you should not look up anything for this assignment. Uh, and that is it. So if you have any um, questions about exemplification or how to construct it, please email me. I've also provided an example essay for uh, the exemplification task so that you can kind of see what I mean when I say exemplification essay. So you have an 